Welcome back. This is Dr. Jen Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today I'm going to make a slightly different video, and we're going to talk about shoulder pain and the four simple steps to correct shoulder pain. So before I get into it, a disclaimer. If you had an injury that's recent, it needs to be evaluated. If you have a complete tear of one of the muscles in the shoulder, it needs to be evaluated. We're talking about chronic shoulder pain and some simple steps that you can utilize to help yourself. Now, there are a lot of videos online about stretching the shoulder and exercising the shoulder, but I'm gonna give you some simple tips that will help improve the shoulder pain that you can do in a very short period of time. All right, so let's get started. <clears throat> Strengthen the internal and external rotators. Oftentimes, the muscles that we work are shoulder muscles, meaning the, the deltoid muscle. So we work the anterior deltoid when we do like uh, bench presses or lateral raises, or when we pull, we're working the shoulder muscles. The smaller muscles called the rotator cuff muscles are underneath there, and they need to be strengthened. And the way to do that is internal and external rotation. So if we had, let's say, a band or a TheraBand, and we hold it in our hand, and the band is attached to the door on, on my left, what you can do is do these exercises where you're pulling with resistance this way. The other flip side is an internal rotation where the band is on that side, and you're pulling in towards your stomach. Right? If you did uh, five to six reps to start with four sets, and then increase it to maybe 10 repetitions, four sets, internal and external rotation. If you want to get more advanced with the internal external rotation, you can have it in this position, and you could externally rotate and internally rotate. Okay? Another way you can do it is using dumbbells. If you had a dumbbell and you placed, let's say, your elbow on your knee, bent, and you took a dumbbell and you brought it down and brought it up this way, that's external rotation, right? Internal rotation would be having it here and bringing it up this way, okay? So internal, external rotation, strengthening is very important. Obviously, stre stretching is very important, but the purpose of this video is to just get to the nitty gritty. Increase proprioception of the shoulder. Increasing proprioception means shoulder awareness. What you can do is use vibration. Let's say you have a machine that vibrates and you just kind of move it and it goes into the shoulder. That will increase proprioception. Another way you can do it is a plank or a push-up on a bolsa ball or a balanced disc. So if you went on the floor and you try to do it on an unstable surface, or even a foam pad, an unstable surface that will increase proprioception to the shoulder. Now, you also see ads where you see uh, someone spinning an apparatus to strengthen the shoulder. That's another way to improve small muscles uh, in the shoulder, the strength of the small muscles, as well as improve the proprioception into the shoulder joints. The shoulder is very complicated because it's a very shallow joint because the head of the humerus goes into the glenoid fossa of the scapula and it's very shallow. So all the muscles around it and the ligaments and tendons help to support it. It's shallow because it gives you full range of motion of the shoulder, right? We have very good range of motion. However, uh, if, you, if the muscles and tendons around it and the ligaments are not strong, it becomes unstable, okay? So that's why you want to do the internal external rotations. You want to increase proprioception of the shoulder and then traction of the shoulder. So this is um, not talked about very often, but what you can do is traction the shoulder. If you took a very light weight to start, depending on your tolerance and, and the pain that you're in, you take a, maybe a three to five pound dumbbell and you will just let it hang by your side. And you can rotate the arm a little bit as you do that. 
As you get better, you can lean over and put your hand on a table or a chair, and then you can let it hang at 90 degrees to your body. So if I'm bending forward, my arm would just hang with the weight. And you can do internal and external rotation of the shoulder. So that's slightly tractioning the shoulder. As you get better, you can increase the weight of the, um, of the dumbbell. If you don't have any dumbbells or you don't have any apparatus, what you can do is you take your hand, make a fist, and you put it between your knees. If you can grab the inner thigh of one of the legs, what you can do is you put your hand between your knees in the fetal position on your side, and you can traction by just bringing your knees down towards the floor or towards the feet and then pulling up. You can traction that shoulder. So you can do circular pendular exercises for traction. You can stick your hand between your knees in the fetal position and traction that shoulder to increase movement. As you get better, what you can do is hold on to a door uh, way and traction out by squatting. And then you go up a little higher, a little higher, and then to the point where you can actually get up onto, let's say, a pull-up bar and just traction your body weight slowly down, right? You never want to put too much stress on the shoulder and you have to build to that. But tractioning the shoulder can be very therapeutic to the shoulder muscles and the joints. Now, compression of the shoulder. What I mean by that is using pressure into some of the trigger points of the shoulder. So there's three or four different areas that I'd like you to try. So if you took your arm and you took your thumb and the opposite hand, and you go into the anterior um, portion of the deltoid muscle or the bicipital groove, what you do is you put your thumb in there and you press deeply and you take your hand and you internally and externally rotate that shoulder. And what you do, what you feel is you're going to feel some muscles and, and kind of tendons kind of jumping around under that thumb. What you want to do is increase the pressure of the thumb into that area and you internally and externally rotate it. Now, this can be painful for some, so you got to kind of modulate the pressure of that thumb. But as you get better, you go a little bit deeper and you compress that area and internally and externally rotate that shoulder. Now, you can also get a tennis ball, or if you're brave, you can get a lacrosse ball, and you can lie on your side and then put it right under in here, the meaty portion of the muscles in here, and lie on the side and see if you can get uh, some of the trigger points in there, okay? That gets like things like the teres ma uh, major and minor and latissimus, or you can use a foam roller and you can compress that area, okay? Another area you can compress is the sub um, infraspinatus muscle. And that is back and over here. And you can lie into a tennis ball or a lacrosse ball on your back and roll over to the side and find areas that are very tender and you compress it. Now the compression should last maybe 10 to 15 seconds and then release it and then repeat, maybe three to four times. Another good area, or area to compress is what we call the rhomboid area. That is between the wing bone and the spine, right? The scapula bone and the spine. There's about a scap about this big. You could put the tennis ball there and lie into it and just compress that area, okay? Again, 10 to 15 seconds of pressure and then release just kind of shake it out and repeat three to four times. So now we have internal external rotation, increased proprioception of the shoulder, traction of the shoulder, and compression of the shoulder. Before doing these exercises, might, you might want to just kind of warm up the area with a hot shower or a hot pack. Uh, after the exercises, if you feel a little sore, you can use a little bit of ice for 10 to 15 minutes over the area and just to get the inflammation out. In terms of shoulder health and nutrition, you can do some anti-inflammatories like curcumin, turmeric, um, boswellia. <clears throat> you can also use creams uh, to help penetrate deeper into the muscles. You can use hemp extract and so forth 
uh, for anti-inflammatory effects to the muscles and tissues. Fish oil is another good supplement to use. So you can use a combination of boswellia, curcumin, uh, uh, or turmeric, and then you can use fish oil along with uh, a cream uh, into the shoulder. Try that for two weeks and you will see a remarkable difference. I would say about 80% or 85% of people with chronic shoulder issues, if you did these steps, uh, you could relieve a, a lot of that uh, discomfort in that shoulder. Okay, my name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results, and we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.